We commit them to you in this baptism, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. According to your faith, Chris, in the word of God, I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How you feeling? Relax. Hey, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, good. But like, is there a towel for me downstairs somewhere? Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. I do not know. Hey, bro, when you're ready, you can just stand here. All right, should I uh, just... We don't know. Put your towel up here, so when you come out of the water, you can grab it. Just stand right there, and then when I come in, we'll, we'll go right here, like I said. Just stand here, just kneel down, and we'll go right down. This one, okay? We got the video man here. Right. <laughs> He's nervous, but on the surface he looks calm and ready. <laughs> Christopher, how are you feeling, brother? Let's pray and we'll just sit. I'll, I'll speak a few words for 10 minutes or so, five, 10 minutes, and then we'll baptize. Father, we thank you for your love, grace, and mercy. Thank you for this gathering today, Lord. We are told that when one comes to repentance and gets baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, all of heaven, all the hosts of heaven rejoice. Father, we are here at the end time. And we are here to gather in the sheep, the last ones. And we have Chris here that has come today, Father. Lord, obey your word. And we ask that you said where two or three are gathered together in my name, you'll be in the midst, Lord. We don't need a big crowd. We just need you, Father. We need you to come and honor your word today and bless my brother, Lord. The seed, the attribute of God that lies within inside of him, Father. Lord, and, and just let it grow and let it be ignited today, Lord. Be uh, awakened more and more as he walks and as he reads the word. May it just continue to open up to him, Father. May you honor your word today. That's all we need you to do, Father, is honor your word. And you said if we come and repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we'll, our sins will be forgiven and we will receive the Holy Spirit which will guide us and lead us into all truth, Father. Amen. We just thank you for your love, grace, and we commit this baptism into thy hands for thy honor and thy glory in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Well, I was talking to <coughs> Brother Chris there in the back, and I was just at home today, and I was just thinking, what, what could I say? You know, the last couple of baptisms, we said some things, you know, and, and what came to my heart and, 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 and Chris confirmed it today, what our fellowship was all about was uh, revelation. The, and I want to just read a couple of quotes here from Brother Branham and a few scriptures. Because the importance of revelation to a true believer, right, is everything, right? We're not here because, you know, Chris explained to me that he was Catholic. I was Catholic, being brought up. You know, Catholics, you have works. You, you, you know, you try to work things up. You try to do things to, to earn your salvation. But revelation is totally different. We don't have to do nothing to earn anything. All we have to do and all God requires from us is our obedience. And that's why Chris is here. He's being obedient to the Word of God. And what the Word of God says, to come and repent of your sins and be baptized. So I want to read a quote from Brother Branham here, a prophet of God. The importance of revelation by the Spirit to a true believer can never be overemphasized. Revelation means more to you than perhaps you realize. Now I'm not talking about the book of Revelations and you. I am talking about all revelations. It is tremendous important to the church. Do you remember in Matthew 16 where Jesus asked the disciples this question? Whom do men say that the Son of Man am? 
And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some are Elias, some are Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, but who say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And God will ask us, the Holy Spirit will ask us too, the same thing, right? A lot of people can say, Chris, who is this? God sent a prophet, God sent a word of God, which Jesus Christ is the word of God. And that word is going to ask you, who do you say that this is? Right? When this, when this revelation struck me and this message came to me and it opened up to me and some of the brothers, Brother Mike, one of them started witnessing this word of God to me. Right? I had that question in my heart. Who is this? Is, is, it, is it another church? Is it another Catholic church? Is it another just uh, a higher following, a higher teaching? But see, something spoke into my heart and said, this is the Christ, the Son of the living God. This is the truth, right? And just like the apostles, when they had a lot of the Pharisees and Sadducees, they had a lot of the teachings and religion of that day. But here was Jesus standing alone. He had no church. He had no big uh, group or following, right? But he had a teaching. He had a word of God that he was speaking. And they said, where can we go? When Jesus said, go, where can we go? You've got the words of life. That's what this is, brother. It's the word of life. Jesus answered and said, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar Jonah. Flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven, has revealed it unto thee. No man can reveal it unto you. I can speak to you, Brother Mike. Everybody can speak to you, Chris. But nobody can really reveal truth to you. Only God can reveal truth to you. So when truth is being revealed to you, it brings confidence and faith, right, in your walk with God, that is God speaking to you. You'd rather, you'd rather want to know that God is speaking to you than I'm speaking to you, right? That brings confidence, brings faith. So when the trials do come, like you said, you're, you're being tested and tried more than ever before. When they do come, you can have that confidence that God is with you. And that's all we need to know. Right? We love our brothers and sisters, and our brothers and sisters support us. But what I need more than anything, what you need more than anything, is to know that God is with you. And he said here, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. See, you see what, you see what Jesus is saying here? Brother, truth, Satan can never take it away from you. If it's revealed in your heart, you might go, you might have some problems, you might have some struggles with fleshly sin as you walk this journey. You might stumble and you might fall, but the gates of hell will never keep you down, brother. You'll get back up each and single time because something inside of your heart will be pulling you to the truth. These are our experiences after 30 something years, right? Because why? Flesh and blood has not revealed it to you. <laughs> But my Father which is in heaven has revealed it. And upon this rock, Revelation, I will build my church. And this church is built upon Revelation. On thus saith the Lord. You see, it exposes Satan and reveals his works. His attempts to destruction of God's people. Discrediting God's word. Right down to the time that he's cast in the lake of fire. Satan will fight that. So he'll fight your life. Right from today on, brother, you're not going to, he'll fight you and he'll fight you. But we have been given the promise that Jesus said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. And this truth that God is revealing into your heart and will reveal to you, will prevail against the gates of hell. So Satan will have no power against it. No power, brother. So there's no, there's, there's no, there's no excuse, right? There's no excuse to say, oh, Satan is too powerful. Satan's too strong. My flesh is too strong. My desires for sin is too strong. No. There's no excuse. Right? Because the word of God will fight and will overcome everything. The true revelation to the true church is what she is and what she stands for. And she will do the greater work. She will be an invincible army. And if they get a true revelation of the two spirits within the framework of the Christian church, by God's spirit deserted and withstanding the end of Christ's spirit, Satan will be powerless before her. Now, I know I'm reading a lot of stuff here, and I know some of it is maybe not making sense to you. But like I said in the room to you, yeah. things will come back to you. 
right? When you're in the midst of the battle, when you're in the midst and you need to know truth in your mind, that's why we put the word of God within us so that God can come and reveal it back to you. Because this, this walk is about a battle. If you're walking in a newness of life, you're walking in, in a new a realm, a new area here now than what the world is walking in. The blood of the covenant is not recognized without the token. Brother Brown is speaking here in the token message. The word assures us of that promise. The token is a sign, the purchase that has been made for us. Full obedience to the full word of God entitles you to the token. No matter where there that you could be, it entitles you to that token. You are, until you are full obedience, like we talked about in the room there, as God reveals to you, he, one revelation at a time, brother, he'll reveal, he'll reveal, and he'll grow. But that one, when that revelation comes to you, and it's time and the season that God delivers it to you, your full obedience to that truth that comes to your heart, right, entitles you to more of the Holy Spirit like we talked about. So every time that God speaks to you, and the Word of God speaks to your heart, you're going to know it. How am I going to know it, brother Tim? You're going to know it. Just like you said, you know, truth opened up to me and all my questions started being answered. See, that's truth being revealed. Now, when that happens, brother, your obedience to that entitles you. God is obligated to give you more of His Spirit. In Romans 6, 4, Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism unto death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also should we walk in newness of life. So as He, do you believe, Chris, that He died and He rose again on the third day? So as He died and was buried and He rose again, He's saying to you, that's the same process that I'm going to do in your life. That's what's going to happen to you, because you're going to be buried right now with him in death. This is only a natural thing, but spiritually, you're going to be buried with him. And then when you raise up out of these waters, you're going to walk in the newness of life. He's going to give you that newness of life. In 1 Peter 3.21, the light figure whereunto even baptism do also now save us. Not putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what he's going to give you, a good conscience towards him and his word. Right? Acts 2.38 Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you, your children, and all them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And I believe, Chris, that he has called you today. Do you believe that? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the one true living God? Do you renounce your past life, Satan, the flesh, and accept the word Jesus Christ into your heart? To walk with him? To serve him the rest of the days of your life? We're here in the water, Father. You knew that this day was going to happen with my brother Chris. You knew who would be here and what would be spoken, Lord. The importance of revelation to the true church of the living God. And we are that church, Lord. There is no building that's called the church 
the body of Jesus Christ, the individuals, is the church, Father. Lord, may revelation come to my brother Chris, Lord, to continue to waken that attribute up so that he may grow in grace and grow in this newness of this life, Lord. Father, he has repented of his sins, Lord. He's acknowledged that he's a sinner. He was born in sin and shaped in iniquity and come to this world speaking lies. He recognizes, Lord, he's without God. Though he was brought up uh, Catholic in the church and all kinds of things, but he, in his heart he recognized that there was no God there. And now, Father, you have spoken into his heart, and now he's inviting you in, Lord. Now, by the obedience of your word, Father, I'm going to baptize him in your name, Father. And you do what you said you're going to do, Father. Fill him and fill him all the days of his life until the time of the rapture, Lord, where his body will be changed and will be all caught up together to meet you in the clouds, Lord. Keep him through the trials and the, and the struggles that he'll go through, Father. Break the power of Satan upon his life, Father. We renounce Satan. Satan, you heard his testimony. He renounces you and he accepts the Lord Jesus Christ. And you got no more power over him. We, could, we transfer him from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. We take him out of your hands and put him in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God from this day on. And we bind your activities in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, take control of him now, Father. We commit him to you in this baptism, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. According to your faith, Chris, in the word of God, I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Congratulations, Amen. Chris. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, brother. I thought it would have something to say, but that's it. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, brother. Amen. Your, te your testimony here today and your, your, your presence here today and your obedience says a lot, brother. It says a lot. Amen. God bless you. We're here for you. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Spirit, yeah. I felt the spirit. I know you did. So that's his confirmation to you, brother, that he's he's here. He's gonna walk with you every step of the way. It's okay. You can you can go, brother. You're gonna get a little bit of wet on the on the. Gotta come out dripping. <laughs> gotta go so deep with God that you come out dripping. Yeah. So that everybody who comes in contact with you. Let's see. If Amen. Amen. Ready. Amen. There goes that man. All right, Chris. Amen. How do you feel, brother? I do feel like right now. I don't have the words. We will later. And so you I'm have just been my infused. Own, my own ideas won't. Uh, you have just been infused. Bro, I literally like going under. Like, what did you feel I, I when you were in the water? Visualize it beforehand, but going under, I literally just felt like, just like release and just like, dude, I don't know how to word it, but it was literally just like all like everything from before just emptied. It was just like down under 
and then up, and it's just like, hey man, got no complaints, got uh, got no worries. Yes, sir. For the rest of your days. <laughs> mhm. Mm All right. I you want to give me some privacy? All right, buddy. <laughs> Congratulations, man. Alrighty. Well, there are the baptism clothes. No, there's something. For some reason, that wants to hold on. But uh, yeah, that's it. Saying goodbye to the old me. And uh, these are the clothes that happened in. I don't know. There's something special about it. <laughs> I don't know why, but it feels like there's something special about the clothes I was baptized in. But yeah.